In my book, the general rule or mindset should be, as long as nobody is harmed, who cares what anyone is into? But a lot of people are rather concerned with notions of what's normal versus what's weird, which of course varies by situation. What's considered normal at a D&D table or a Magic the Gathering gathering would be very different from what's considered normal at a biker meetup or a metal concert, which in turn is very different from what's considered normal at a business office or at the military base. On the one end of the spectrum, you have stuff that most people would consider mainstream, not weird. Things like being into gardening or travel or sports or fashion and beauty. And then uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum, most people will probably agree that's at least somewhat weird. Like, Risking your life train surfing, or collecting creepy dolls, obsessing over conspiracy theories, or learning everything about serial killers, or taking beautiful Victorian homes, modernizing them, stripping away all character, and sterilizing them with a bland cookie-cutter interior whose cozy vibe is only rivaled by a hospital. Some of you may not consider the latter weird, but I gotta tell you, you're objectively wrong. This should be a crime. Just kidding, it's all subjective. Which reminds me, one thing I personally find weird is taking everything literally and not being able to detect humor. I know, that's a condition, no offense. Now, of course, something doesn't have to be strange and unusual to be interesting. It can also just be high quality. Like Thorum Rings, for example, today's sponsor. There is unusual stuff as well, for example, synthetic fire opal, dinosaur bone, meteorite, ironwood, etc. And also more common materials like ceramics, stainless steel, tungsten, titanium, and so, so on. There are lots of different designs from utilitarian to fancy and everything in between. You can also find watches with small inlays of various materials, as well as minimalist wallets and necklaces, all made by a small business in Tampa, Florida. So if you're looking for some unique, cool looking, well-made accessories, check out Thorum, link in the description below. Whatever hobby or interest you consider eccentric, there is an extra layer when it comes to an interest in historical weapons, or contemporary for that matter. And really, I can't even blame anyone who regards weapon enthusiasts with some level of suspicion. It is kind of odd to geek out over things that have been used to unalive each other. I hate this. Can, can we just say words on social media? Let's just go with end each other. How about that? An interest in things that are designed to end each other. I can see why that would be a source of potential mistrust. People ask why? Why would you have an interest in that? Like, are you obsessed with violence or something? The majority of people in this community or subculture or whatever are not. It does seem a little less benign than an interest in, say, nature videography. That's way too shaky and out of focus, isn't it? I get the bee though. You can't complain about that. I got the damn bee. And when you get a genuine question, like why are you interested in weapons? As opposed to when are you going to shoot up the school? It's not that easy to answer. At least I don't find it that easy. It has several different aspects to it. There is the history aspect, but you can get that by just studying history in general. And there is a collecting aspect. I should also mention the engineering aspect, if you will, and the nerdery involved in analyzing weapon designs by their dynamics and blade harmonics and pros and cons of each individual feature. Fun stuff, if you're into that. And then there is the practical aspect. I think that's the one that seems the weirdest to people, where you get, you know, ballistic dummy heads and hack them apart with swords and other things. Yeah, a little bit weird. I can agree with that. So yeah, what's up with that? Like test cutting, for instance. The purpose of test cutting obviously is to test the quality of a historical sword reproduction or test your own ability at cutting in practicing a armed historical martial art. What's the point of that? I mean, yeah, it's just something that you happen to be interested in, but why? Why are we interested in that? Yes, it is a way to practically connect with history but it's uh it's done on a pretty small scale as opposed to doing reenactment which would be connecting with history in a practical way in a much more comprehensive fashion so why do you do weapon tests is indeed a good question just like why do kids tend to pick up sticks and pretend they're swords 
and uh, always want toy guns. There's something inherent to the human experience as shown by our uh, peaceful coexisting history. Whatever is behind that natural fascination with weapons and violence and all that, I can't answer that. I mean, there are certain obvious hypotheses, like it may be evolutionarily beneficial to take out competition when there's limited resources, uh, which is why we tend to do that to the out-group rather than the in-group. However that may be, you'll find plenty of kids who enjoy toy weapons and, and simulating violence in play who are perfectly peaceful, who will not bully each other or do horrible things to animals or anything like that. Of course, sometimes you do find those. In these subcultures you will also find people who are obsessed with weapons in a bad way, who do have fantasies about using them in real life or who glorify war and things like that. But just like the general population, it's a small minority. So it's a minority within the minority, meaning that it's very unlikely that you would ever be assaulted by a sword geek. Why are weapons interesting? I don't entirely know either. Um, there is definitely a sports aspect to it, you know, like practicing historical martial arts. You know, it is a sport, just like other martial arts, just like other sports. Um, and test cutting also definitely has a sports aspect. In fact, the only thing that prevents it from being mainstream is that it's not integrated into mainstream culture. If you look at Japan, for example, Tameshigiri is a lot more common and accepted. I wouldn't go so far as to call it mainstream, but I would argue it's more common than it is here, and people don't bat an eye at it as much, the same way as an interest in swords. Um, they might bat an eye at an interest in non-Japanese swords, I don't know. It's quite satisfying. The same way as firing a gun, maybe. Sure, some people are scared by them, uh, even when they try them out, they're still scared, they still don't want them, but um, in my experience, a lot of quote-unquote normies who try it actually find that they like it surprisingly much. I think most of the suspicion comes from a sort of Freudian mindset. And by the way, Sigmund Freud was wrong about everything, basically, so stop quoting him, all right? Maybe some of his own personal behavior was motivated by wanting to f his mother, but that is not the case for most people, all right? And Freudian slips, that's quackery, too. Anyway, so the idea that there's some kind of real urge behind certain interests or whatever. So if you're interested in weapons, you're secretly fantasizing about using them for real. And I said, there's a very small minority that may do that. But generally, that is absolutely not a factor. A lot of people who are, who have an interest in uh, martial arts and weapons and all that are very peaceful by nature. There's something known as the call of the void or the high place phenomenon, which you might have experienced yourself because it's surprisingly common. In a study they found that over half of participants said that they've encountered this at some point, which is, uh, imagine you're standing uh, at the edge of a cliff or on top of a high building or a bridge or something, you know, something where if you were to jump down, you would certainly perish. And uh, your brain suddenly goes, do it, jump. And you have no actual inclination to do it at all. You don't want to. But your mind, for some reason, just goes, huh, what if I do that right now? I could totally do that. It doesn't mean that you're actually more likely to do it. Uh, in fact, people who have, how do I put that in a way that YouTube allows? Uh, people who fantasize about um, ending it all are no more likely to to have to, to feel the call of the void let's put it that way not in this way and so it just shows you that you can have intrusive thoughts or you can have certain inclinations and interests that don't mean that if you're into this that must mean that you're more likely to do that no not really but the thing is, an outside observer doesn't know that. All that an outside observer sees is, huh, they're practicing the ending of people. Which, you know, I understand why you would react suspiciously to that. Of course, yes. <laughs> it may not seem weird to us within the community, but to the outside, yeah, you bet your ass it's weird. I have to confess, when I was younger, I did sometimes have thoughts like, I wish my interests didn't draw such negative attention from normies, but these days, eh.
There are plenty of like-minded people with whom you can geek out about anything, really. Whatever happens to spark your interest. If I had to explain what makes all this stuff interesting, it's a bunch of different aspects. I mentioned a few already. You know, you you have the collecting part, you have the the historical part, you have the sports aspect, you have the community aspect in and of itself. And there's a reason why so many art museums have arms and armor collections after all. There is the craftsmanship and the aesthetic value. Sure, it comes with the historical baggage of the horrible things that people did to each other, but um, they don't anymore. And even back then, swords were also symbols and prestige items and pieces of art. Olympic fencing and archery are rooted in activities that historically ended plenty of lives, be it human or animal. But they have been adopted by mainstream culture and turned into something that's seen as peaceful. So you could say, aha, that shows how silly it is to call this weird when it could easily be a part of mainstream culture if things were a little bit different. But the thing is, they aren't. You still have to relate to societal norms as they are, so you can't really take offense at somebody else considering you strange or eccentric or even being a little bit suspicious of what you do. Because, well, how are they supposed to? know that you're a peaceful person, even though you are, you have an interest in things that are anything but, historically. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not at all trying to argue here that normies are perfectly justified in discriminating against minority interests. No, you should still try not to be a dickweed about it, and to give people the benefit of the doubt, and just say, okay, seems weird to me, not my thing, but you do you, right? As long as nobody's being harmed. But again, they don't know that nobody is really going to be harmed from this. For the most part, other than maybe some broken fingers from HEMA tournaments and whatnot. So is geeking out about weapons weird? Generally, yes, kind of. But that's fine, because there's no harm done most of the time. Which can also be said about most sports. Most of the time there's no harm done, but sometimes it happens. And that's okay. That's an acceptable risk for the freedom to do things you enjoy. Anyway, I just felt like having a little ramble about this. Hopefully it wasn't too incoherent. Thanks for your patience and making it through to the end. And um, take care. Stay safe, folks. Mm -hmm.